In this video, we'll be reviewing the basics of vancomycin Bayesian modeling. Bayesian modeling for vancomycin works essentially in three different steps. The first step is that you have what's called a Bayesian prior. What this means is that you, the clinician, will dive into the literature and identify articles that are pharmacokinetic studies of patients that are similar to your patient that you're trying to model. So for example, if you have a critically ill patient, you might identify a paper like this one that was specific for critically ill patients to better model your patient versus what was studied in a pharmacokinetic manuscript. So you might identify a paper that is as close to your patient as possible, and in that paper, maybe they come up with a volume of distribution and a vancomycin clearance point estimate. So in this example here, you can see a typical point estimate of 0.98 liters per kilogram of the volume of distribution with some degree of variance or standard deviation of 37%. Similarly, with vancomycin clearance, you can see that it depends on the patient's creatinine clearance, and then there are some, some constant and some standard deviation after that. The next step is that you want to draw vancomycin levels for your patient. And what happens is um, you can either draw one level, which is kind of what is one of the big advantages of Bayesian modeling is that you can potentially just get one level, or you could get multiple levels. And obviously, the more levels you get, the more accurate your estimate is going to be. And the other nice thing about Bayesian modeling is you don't have to be at steady state. You can be if you want to, but it's not a requirement that you have to get to steady state in order to get that drug level to continue your modeling effort. From there, a bunch of math is involved that I'll talk about in a second. And essentially what you get, an end result with this Bayesian modeling, is that it gives you a more accurate estimate of the pharmacokinetic parameters that you're interested in. So as you can see here, initially we thought that our volume of distribution was 0.98 liters per kilogram. And based on the levels that we obtained, uh, it would appear that our estimate should be a little bit higher than that. So with the modeling, you can see that it actually estimated a, a volume of distribution that was a little bit higher than the point estimate. And similarly, um, with creatinine clearance, our constant was 14.2 as opposed to 15.4 with the original point estimate. Basically what is happening here is that we're using probability and we're using that drug level that was obtained to have a more accurate estimate of the most likely volume of distribution and clearance of vancomycin for this particular patient. So you might be asking yourself what math is involved or what is the process to kind of optimize and figure out what is the most likely volume of distribution and vancomycin clearance for a patient. What happens uh, with Bayesian modeling is you have a function or an equation with a dependent variable, in this case, a serum concentration, and any number of independent variables that you are either trying to solve for or are constants. So for example, when we give a patient vancomycin, we know what dose we gave them, we know how long the infusion was, and we know how many doses they've received, and we know how frequently we're giving them that dose. In contrast, though, we don't know the patient's elimination constant volume of distribution, and that's actually what we're trying to solve for, and that's what Bayesian modeling does, is with a given uh, dependent variable, like a serum concentration, we know what that is because we obtained it from the patient, we want to figure out what is the most likely elimination constant and volume of distribution based on what we knew from that pharmacokinetic paper. And if you're curious, um, most of the papers involving Bayesian modeling with vancomycin talk about clearance of vancomycin as opposed to an elimination constant. So there is a relationship between these two variables. So at the end of the day, really what Bayesian modeling is trying to do is come up with what the optimal, an optimal is um, what really Bayesian modeling is doing is coming up with the most likely clearance of vancomycin and volume of distribution values that could produce the observed serum concentration that we collected in our patient. And the way that it does this and optimizes this is based on those initial values. And those initial values are in that pharmacokinetic paper and also the standard deviations that were observed in that paper, which hints to us at how much those variables may change between patient one and patient two. Now from that point, once we figured out what is the most optimal or most likely volume of distribution and clearance of vancomycin, the next step is to use our traditional pharmacokinetic equations. So we can come up with a particular dose for a patient and also a frequency for a patient. And based on that, we have now an estimated volume of distribution, an estimated elimination constant based on that serum concentration we obtained for the patient. And we can figure out for any given dose, what peak level might we obtain? What trough level might we obtain? 
And then finally, what AUC we might expect based on that dosing regimen that we're giving the patient and whether that would be appropriate based on our pharmacokinetic goals for that particular patient's vancomycin. Now, Bayesian modeling isn't new, but it's becoming more popular for a variety of reasons. And some of the advantages of those include, one, you can get a single drug level, although this isn't preferred, this is something you can do and have more accurate representation of a patient's volume of distribution in their vancomycin clearance versus what we used to do historically, which was just use a population estimate of what those parameters were, and it wasn't as accurate. And because of that, because we have a greater accuracy of determining a patient's pharmacokinetic parameters, specifically volume of distribution and clearance, now we can come up with a better estimate of what their true AUC is. Now, historically, what we would do is we would only get a trough level and then estimate what their peak probably is, but our ability to accurately estimate that peak was not very good. So with Bayesian modeling, we're able to have more accurate estimates of the peak, the trough, and therefore the AUC of vancomycin. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really nice that you don't have to be at steady state. You can be, and you don't have to be, and that allows us to estimate a patient's pharmacokinetic parameters earlier as opposed to waiting until we get to steady state and then drawing a single trough level, which was the historical method of dosing vancomycin. Now, there are some disadvantages of Bayesian modeling. It's not perfect. So one is that it's computationally complex. There's no way you can do this by hand. The math involved uses matrices, um, and it's a, a very long algorithmic approach to how it comes up with the most optimal values for volume of distribution and vancomycin clearance. Probably the biggest disadvantage is that the accuracy of what the Bayesian model comes up with is highly dependent on which model you initially decide to go with for your patient. So for example, um, if you pick the critically ill patient model, but your patient is not critically ill, you're going to be very far off in terms of what your model will look like. So it's very important that you're picking a model that is most representative of the patient in front of you. A great example of this are the three Bayesian models that are currently used on clincalc.com. What you'll see is that we have a general hospitalized patient model, we have an ICU or critically ill patient model, and we have a model for those who are extreme obesity with very, very high BMIs and body weights. And if you take an example patient, in this case we have a 100 kilogram patient with a creatinine clearance of 80, you can see there's a huge variability in the clearance of vancomycin that is produced from the Bayesian model simply because of the fact that these models are expecting a different kind of patient population. In addition to that, you can see wide extremes for volume of distribution. We know volume of distribution for obese patients is quite low compared to critically ill patients, it's quite high. So it's not surprising that we'll come up with different values for that, but this reinforces the fact that you can't just pick one model and that model is going to fit all patients all of the time. There is no perfect single model for Bayesian modeling. Finally, this is still an estimate. So because we're only obtaining one vancomycin level for these patients, there is some degree of error and variability that we are still cannot account for. And in truth, if we wanna have the most accurate representation of the patient's pharmacokinetic parameters, we need to use a two drug level approach, the sawchuk zasky method, which is much more accurate and doesn't have this error. And I think that sometimes because of this uh, computationally complex computer-driven approach, people think that this is kind of a, a magical method that you swing a wand and suddenly you know everything about how vancomycin disposition is in your patient, and that's simply not true. There's, this is still an estimate with some degree of variability and error associated with it. If you'd like to experiment with Bayesian modeling with vancomycin, you're welcome to do so for free at clincalc.com. The calculator now does incorporate Bayesian modeling to account for what we've talked about today.